get my milk in the morning. I can't get my cream no more. I can't get my cream no First farm animal I built was one of the cows from the master box set, Operation Milkman. She came in 10 parts, including the 4 teats. There was a whole lot of seam lines to remove. Most of them were just scraped off with the back of the number 11 blade. A little bit of sanding finished the job. The first real thing to do was changing the hooves into the correct appearance. Cows are artiodactyly, so each hoof had to be split in two. I did this with a triangular file and the hobby knife. I used this sharp edged file to remove the seam line in the cow's mouth. The two halves of the body and the neck didn't fit too well. An extra challenge were the non existing locator pins. A decision had to be made. Should I try to sand the parts as much as it would be necessary to make them fit properly? Should I just glue them together and then fill the gaps? I decided to sand the parts just lightly. If I sanded off too much, the neck wouldn't fit anymore. The result would rather look like a calf instead of a cow. To assemble the parts and fill most of the gaps in one step, I did what I usually do when I assemble figures. I used thin putty instead of plastic cement. Then I used to mere extra thin to spread or remove the axis. If there are still minor gaps after curing, I use liquid C8 glue to fill them. Sanding the joints isn't too much work this way. The udder didn't fit at all and had only a few contact points on the cow's belly. I dry fitted it and outlined it with a pencil. Then I spread a fair amount of thinned putty onto the area. After that, the excess was treated with Tamiya Extra Thin. Assembling parts this way makes for a curing time of at least one day and you shouldn't try to start sanding earlier. In the meantime, I glued the two parts of the head together. I used my favorite glue for it, Revell Contactor Professional. If I need a strong bond, I use a slow curing cement. The two parts were assembled the way that they would fit to the gluing area on the neck. Of course there were some gaps to fill. In this particular case I only used liquid CA glue because of two characteristics. Capillary action and build up. Using this applicator the CA glue won't cover any details that would have been to rebuild afterwards. CA glue dries transparently so it isn't always easy to tell if a gap is completely filled. The best way to make sure is to scratch slowly and carefully across the joint with a toothpick. If you can't feel a step, the gap is filled sufficiently. Since the egg glue cures within minutes, you can start sanding the joints very soon after you filled the gaps. Another nice characteristic of the egg glue is that it's quite hard when it's cured. I find it easier to sand than normal putty. I marked a couple of areas that needed a last go of filling with the egg glue. After that I was happy with the result. I liked the area around the udder. While curing the thin putty left some wrinkles that look quite natural. Sometimes it's just a good idea to let the tooth do the work for you. While looking at the cow's rear end, I thought there was something missing. Since all of us tried to build for realistic looking results, I used a small amount of putty to turn this plastic animal into a real cow. Don't worry, this isn't animal porn. Most of it will be covered by the tail, but in my opinion it was important to add the vagina. These aren't Disney figures that only have uncles but no mothers. Well yes, the tail. It didn't fit the way I would have expected it to. I used some of my thin putty to fill the gap. When I get myself another helper, I'm gonna move back to Tennessee. 
Last thing to do was to add two teats, but look what Masterbox did here. Instead of having the sprue gates on the flat end of the teats, they sit in the middle of one side. These parts are tiny. I removed the seam line while they were on the sprue. Of course I lost one of the teats to the carpet monster. I made a new one, but it's slightly thinner. Next animal to build was a cell from the Tamiya livestock set. She came in four parts and didn't have a lot of details or texture. Keep in mind that the set is from 1984. Removing the faint seam lines was a matter of just a couple of minutes. Here I also had to split the hooves. I wouldn't say that the fit was excellent, but at least there weren't any gaps to fill. The two body parts were slightly off at the back, but fit perfectly on the belly. I sanded it down one side instead of filling the step. That would have been unnecessary work in my opinion. The sow didn't lose any of her natural features. I had to drill out the nose a bit. I wanted to have a realistic looking wall socket. Last step was giving the area around the joint some texture. I scratched it in with the tip of my X-Acto knife. Taking pics of all Tamiya animals I used wasn't easy. The styrene is white, quite glossy and there are many reflections and glare. I only take pics as long as there is natural light I can use. We had a lot of blue sky and sunlight the last couple of weeks. This is nice to have but makes taking pics a little difficult sometimes. My first encounter with Reach, the One Piece Sow. Seam lines and flash all around. That didn't leave a good impression. I hope the vehicle kits are better. Something else I didn't like were the areas where the legs meet. That looked way too soft and I changed that in the course of cleaning her out. I used these picks to find spots where I didn't work carefully enough. After removing the massive seam line along her spine, I used the tip of my number 11 blade to rescribe the texture. I did this in short strokes. Then I scraped off some styrene along the joints of the legs to give them more definition. What I absolutely love about the sow is her face. She's suckling her piglets and you can see a smile on her face. Lovely. By looking at her face I noticed her ears. There were slaps of styrene but no ears. At first I scored along the ears with this hook. Then I used a triangular file and the hobby knife to remove as much styrene as possible. I like it like that and now she's got reasons to smile. Now we come to the sow the German soldiers <coughs> borrowed from the farmer. She came with a motorcycle kit that will also be used on this dio. Three parts, two for the body and the head. There was no texture at all on these parts but the fit was quite nice. The joint between the head and the body needed some filling. Again I used liquid CA glue. I also used it to fill the holes around her legs. That worked just nicely. <laughs> I added some texture with the tip of my hobby knife. First I built the three identical Tamiya piglets. There isn't much to say or show. The only issue was a small step between the rear legs. 
If everything was that simple, modeling would be the wrong hobby for me. On the other hand, too much unnecessary work can make me mad. I almost bent the reach piglets. Please take a look at these pigs and judge for yourself. Is that the amount of flesh we should have to deal with on new kids? Fit, I had to remove the locator pins. All piglets had a large gap along their spines and the face didn't fit either. Okay, they're really tiny but they weren't fun to build. For the cat, she's also from the reach set. Whatever I tried to do, it was impossible to take a good pick of her head. The one I used here isn't only bad because of the lighting, the detail is also bad. And as if that wasn't bad enough, the sprue gate sits on the tip of her chin. I only used her because she's depicted in this motion. She'll be trying to hit the puppy you'll see soon. Instead of trying to fill the gap around her neck, I gave her a collar. Actually, there isn't much to say about the following animals. All come from the Tamiya livestock set and all that had to be done was carefully scraping up the seam lines. I lost one of three chicks but that doesn't matter at all. I left them on the sprue for painting. On the smaller animals there isn't much detail, but again, this set is from 1984. It's not bad at all for its age. I said it in my review. It's a pity that the geese are identical. I'll use both, but I can't put them close to another on the diode. I'll also try to paint them differently. The rabbits are dead, so it doesn't matter too much what they look like. They'll be put in the motorcycle sidecar. The puppy's details are as soft as marshmallows, but I'll try my best to do a decent paint job. Time for a conclusion after having built the animals. The master box cow has very nice details, but needed a lot of filling and sanding. It wasn't exactly fun to build her. I came across the same issues when I built the goat for another dio. In the end, I'm happy with the result, but it was a rocky road. If you're looking for cows, it might be better to look for other styrene or resin sets first. I want to make clear that I never had that much work with Masterbox well human figures. So, this is a split recommendation. Soldiers and civilians, yes, animals rather no. The Tamiya animals were surprisingly good for their age. Details are a bit soft. The poses look like they were taken from a biology book. On the other hand, there was almost no seam line. The overall fit of the parts wasn't bad at all. 
I used this set before and I will use it again. If you can do with correct looking animals and not so animated poses, you'll be happy with this set. I know I said it twice before, but this is a set from the Stone Age of Modeling. A recommendation that depends very much on the personal taste. The shelf from Revell's reboxing of Suesta's motorcycle was fun to build. A little bit of filling, sanding and adding texture was necessary, but I enjoyed it very much. Since you can't buy her separately, I can't recommend her. I haven't built the BMW yet, so I'll tell you more about the complete kit after I've finished it. And now for a sad, sad story. The Reach kit deserves a meaningful recommendation, and that is... The only thing I really liked was the sow's face. That's not enough of a reason to buy this set. I'm definitely not too lazy to clean up parts, but my mojo has limits. If the amount of removed flesh is almost equal to the kit parts, then there's something wrong. It's a waste of styrene and a waste of money. As I said in the video, I hope the vehicle kits are better. If I had to judge the manufacturer from this one set, I'd say they'll vanish sooner than soon. I can't understand why some companies aren't capable of doing figures and, in this case, animal at the same level as they make the tanks, trucks or whatever. This is simply embarrassing.